Hello, investing friends. Welcome into Investors Club. Got a great show for you. We've been looking at the mergers and acquisitions, the M&A, if you will. Uh, the M&A, uh, to the lay person. <laughs> uh, we've been looking at the mergers and acquisitions in biotech. What are these big pharmas gobbling up the biotechs for? And it's been about four and a half times projected peak sales is what they're going for. And we've got three more. Well, we, we briefly talked about the one uh, blood therapeutics. Uh, we'll t we, but we'll, there's three more for August. We'll take a look at them. The long story short is all of them are in the range again. None of them have, uh, none of them are sort of clean stories as far as here's the exact projected peak sales and here's what the, here's what they went for. But they're all, they're all, they all, they are all consistent with what we've been seeing. So more consistency, even with all the, with all the chop in biotech, the, the run up last year, the sell off, the recovery looks like four and a half times, four to five times peak sales is in fact still re remaining uh, long and strong. Uh, as ever. And then we'll take a look at Wuhan. The Wuhan lab, which may have brought us the COVID virus, has identified a new virus, bringing us yet another virus, perhaps. Good job there. Good job there. 28 people. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, please hit like if you guys are hitting like. Thanks. Appreciate that. That uh, helps the algorithm. We're up against the algorithm, and including in addition to being up against the shorts. And then home prices, real estate, real estate has uh, has fallen back a bit. The volume of real estate has fallen back dramatically, and then prices usually follow, but they're not following as much yet. But it's also very regional, so we'll take a look at prices pulled back for the first time on a month-to-month -month basis, for the first time in three years. And then we'll take a look at uh, we'll take a look at Florida and California. Remember, we said this is regional, with California being the bear and Florida being the bull. And that's pretty much playing out, but even, and so we'll take a look at those, but, but Florida hasn't, hasn't, Florida's still not still going up. It's just not, not uh, paying as dearly, not giving as much back. Uh, and then uh, pain, pain gives you cancer, uh, including lung cancer. Researchers at Harvard, at Harvard, were trying hard, trying very hard to cure cancer, trying very hard uh, to find a new painkiller because opioids are so problematic. They identified this metabolite you get when there is pain. And so they said, let's make a painkiller based on this. As they're researching, they discover it is uh, related to this cancer, this well-known cancer pathway. And so they were able to inhibit both. Uh, there's, there's this cross talk. There's, it relates to when people have cancer, they have sometimes unexplained pain. And they found a cross talking of these of the pain and cancer pathways and that you could uh, give make, really making two two potential pathways you could treat a, a way to treat cancer by going after this pain pathway and then even a way to treat cancer pain by, by going after that as well so there's a pain pathway and a cancer pathway so pretty neat pretty neat stuff or, or two outcomes there two uh, two two good upshots there and uh, that is that. So with uh, not an investment advisor, not an investment advice, number one ranked stock analyst in the world. What we're doing here is the best research and analysis for you and me, the regular investor, because the financial media lies to us. It's controlled by hedge funds and special interests, and they don't have our best interests in mind. But that's okay. We've got each other. We've got Investors Club. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's take a look at the market. Market was a uh, pretty medium last I checked. Pretty medium on the show. The office. Andy is trying to make conversation with his office mates uh, to be friendly, and he says, "So, per women's professional soccer is pretty medium this year." <laughs> so, market is pretty medium today. Uh, cassava is down about one, uh, a little bit more than one, one percent. Looks like Bitcoin has recovered ever so slightly, really just stabilized a high 19,000s. Really only a few things up. There's a few IKT has edged up. IKT finished above a dollar uh, for the first time a few days ago, hanging around around a dollar. It's got, it needs to stay. They, they've got like a six month like uh, extra time or whatever, but they've got uh, in order to stay on the NASDAQ, they've got their listing requirements to, to get stay above a buck. Not that it really matters. They can always reverse split or just delist. It doesn't really matter. 
Anyway, let's get to the stories. We'll leave Cassava up there. Let's get to the big stories on Action Investors Club. Hard-hitting Action Investors Club. We'll even show some uh, chart lines. Here is from Biopharma Dive. This is a really great site. They, they keep track of the M&A. So uh, the mergers and acquisitions to, to the layperson. So uh, w when you were looking at these small biotechs, what are their assets worth to big pharma? These small biotechs don't have sales forces. They really have no prayer other than to be bought by a big pharma or partnered with or a series of partnerships or something like that. But to take them all the way to, to market by themselves is not the idea. So what are the, what did, so, so M&A, mergers and acquisitions, what are these uh, small biotechs going for? And so it's, again, it's about four to five times projected peak sales. So if they buy a company for, like if they bought Cassava Sciences for Semifilam, it would be Semifilam's projected peak sales. And then sometimes you get the rest of the, of the stuff that comes with the company, but it's just sort of thrown in. If you get, if you get full price for your lead asset, they just throw the rest of the stuff in sometimes. Anyway, so we saw Global Blood Therapeutics August 8th. We didn't, we didn't look at this one in detail. Uh, we last we saw we were up to chemocentric so we have global blood therapeutics was acquired by pfizer on august 8th and then airy pharmaceuticals acquired by alcon on august 22nd that's uh i stuff diurnal uh this is uh we'll see what it is it's neurology something or other on august 30th uh, for 57 million so we got 5.4 billion 770 million and 57 million and again these are all about uh we have to, there's not, I didn't get, there's not, uh, there's not up to date projections of here's the latest best projected peak sales from the analysts. So you just have to guess what the uh, people inside the big pharmas were projecting. But let's start with Global Blood Therapeutics. Uh, so he, the sales right now, they had 195 million uh, of sales of Oxybrita. So Global Blood Therapeutics has Oxybrita. It was already doing 195 million, but they got 5.4 billion for the company. So they're so if if they're doing 4.5 times or four to five times projected peak sales, they're projecting this thing's going to do more than a billion, and it actually was supposed to, and it's doing good growth now. It had like 36 percent growth in the latest quarter or something like that. And, and as of 2019, back three years ago, they were projecting this drug was going to do two and a half billion. So the Med has a 2.2 billion opportunity in the U.S. alone. Cantor Fitzgerald's Alethea Young wrote, still analysts aren't expecting much in 2020 revenues. Young predicts 60 million in sales next year, somebody else 30 million. Overall, Wall Street predicts 2.5 billion in peak global sales. Now that was 2019, and here we are three years later, and they've gotten to about 200 million. So two and a half billion, 200 million. I guess if you even that out, that's a little over a billion. Well, this thing went for 5.4 billion. That is that is four to five times projected peak sales. So again, we didn't get a clean number on this one, but it seems like it's it seems like it's right there in the sweet spot, four to five times projected peak sales. All right, and then here is Airy, and so Airy is uh, glaucoma. Glaucoma. If you can't treat people's Alzheimer's disease, treat their eyes. Everybody's eyes go as they age, right? Uh, so Airy's. So they got seven hundred seventy million. Aries' most recent financial guidance for total glaucoma franchise net product revenue is 130 to 140 for full year 2022. So they got like six times current earnings. So I guess that's four to five times projected peak, or maybe it's a little conservative. You would think an acquiring company would, uh, would be able to uh, blow the sales up. However, this is not Pfizer acquiring. This is Alcon, way smaller company. So maybe they cannot blow the sales up that much. So that's so that is so that that this one went for let's say six times current sales. Don't have any projections on growth, but this relatively uh, smallish smallish acquirer, I, I can can add a little bit of growth. So we're saying that's that's that still seems four to five times projected peak sales ish, and then the other one. Neurocrine and diurnal. 
Uh, hormonal disorders. This one's for hormonal disorders. Hormonal disorders. Diurnal. Okay. I guess maybe sleep, you know, sleep cycle, whatever. Uh, product sales of around 2.3 million pounds in the 12 months ended June with 1 million pounds of that coming from a product that rolled out towards the end of the year. So this one is not clean at all. So this one went for 48 million pounds and they've got 2 million pounds of sales now, but about half of that is from a product that just rolled out at the end of that sales cycle. So maybe they've got, maybe five, if that annualizes, maybe they got four or 5 million pounds of sales and maybe that'll grow to 10 million pounds of sales and they got 48.3 million pounds of sales. So again, I don't have a clean number to work with for a projected peak sales number, but this is, it's not inconsistent with four to five times projected peak sales. It seems consistent with it. So don't have a clean number for that, but it seems consistent again. And then here is Wuhan. Wuhan uh, lab possibly linked to COVID-19 discovers no novel animal virus. So researchers at the Wuhan Institute of Biology uh, reported the discovery of a novel DNA virus in animals. So they were just they were just uh, uh, describing what they saw what they see on a bunch of animals, and they came up found something new. So supposedly they weren't tinkering, <laughs> but anyway, I, I just wanted to mention that as a by the way, good news, good news that they're still uh, <laughs> at it. Good news that they're still in the virus game. <laughs> Uh, and then here is the uh, BH4, is that metabolite that is related, that is a pain metabolite. And researchers at Harvard were researching that to get a better, better painkiller. And they think they found a, a possible new pathway to treat cancer. The research team had previously discovered that sensory neurons produce a metabolite known as BH4 that can drive chronic pain. Higher concentrations of BH4 were tied to increased pain sensitivity and persistence. Based on these findings, the team decided to launch their new research by targeting the BH4 pathway. The screening unveiled an unexpected molecular link between the BH4 pathway and EGFR KRAS signaling, a pathway involved in multiple cancers. In fact, KRAS, you see that in a lot of signaling stuff. In fact, EGFR and KRAS are thought to be most frequently mutated genes in lung cancer. Uh, blocking that signaling decreased pain sensitivity, and then uh, that signaling also increased expression of an important enzyme uh, in the BH4 pathway that contributes to pain, which is GCH1. So it's having a two-pronged effect cancer possibly, cancer and pain. And so to, to sum that up, they say the same triggers that drive tumor growth appear to also be involved in setting the path to chronic pain, often experienced by cancer patients. We also know that uh, sensory nerves can drive cancer. Sensory nerves can drive cancer. We also, they knew that, I didn't know that. We know, we also know that sensory nerves can drive cancer which could explain the vicious circuit of cancer and pain. So I thought that was interesting. If you're in pain, you're going to get cancer. And I wanted to, <laughs> so I wanted to share that. So don't be in pain, I guess. I guess uh, no heart, you know, you're out there running, running for the, for the marathon. And that's no, 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 stop. Go sit on the couch, <laughs> watch investors club. <laughs> and then here we have real estate, uh, home prices decline. This is for nat nationwide. So 0.77%. So imagine that's the stock market. You go three years without a monthly decline, and when you get one, it's less than 1%. So as we're as the theme here, the, the, the real estate market is not the stock market, most especially the domestic uh, residential market. You know, we expect it to be pretty good forever going forward, basically. It'll have its ups and its downs, but uh, we don't expect it to be, we don't expect it to be uh, Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! It's down seventy percent, and, I, and I, should I should I get out? Is is this you know? Is it going? Is it going to zero? Nothing obviously like that. So any obviously. So anyway, point uh, seven seven. So that's what we want to say here is the regionalism though. The regionalism. So across the country, for the first time, we got a uh, a, a small decline. But look at the regionalism. S San Jose. So uh, California is California and Seattle are the biggest ones. Uh, with, you can see, this is not just one month declines. We'll see some, some these are totals so far, but up to 10%, that's the biggest one we're seeing. 
And then here's the, the May to June. Oh, this was when it just began. You can see April to May, everything was still up. April to May, May, everything was still increasing. And then May to June, it started to turn. And really only Seattle and San Francisco felt it. They were the only things that were down less than 1% valuations. But then July, it kicked in. This is all of California. The median price of single family houses dropped 3.5% in July from June, down for the second month in a row, slashing the year over year gain to just 2.8%. But then here is Florida. Florida had less than a 1%. This is the only number I could, only concrete number I could find was Tampa, where their June to July number was down, uh, really the, the nationwide number of 0.7%, uh, 418,000 down to 415,000, less than 1%. And then in the Investors Club Discord, uh, we have a, a real estate guy, Kevin, in there, uh, who I know, uh, and he's in Palm Beach here, Jupiter. And he's uh, sent this along uh, from uh, his uh, coworker or, or something, wherever he got it, wherever he got it. And so this is the original listing price. Are you getting what you're asking for? And this is in Palm Beach. And if you look at uh, single family, single family homes, it's at an all time high. So in 2020, 94.7 percent of the time you got the listing price. In 2021, 98 percent of the time, and even including July, you're including July, you're 99.4 percent of the time. You're, you're so, and it's, it seems to be an all-time high, certainly a, a, a high for the last three years. And then townhouse condo is the same thing. Uh, And then the only thing, frankly, I'm not, I'm not sure what the, two, the difference between these two numbers are, uh, but the other, there's, there's only, one, only one small dip you can find in, in all these numbers. Frankly, I'm not sure why there's two sets of numbers to be. Oh, this is, July, this is just July. I thought these were uh, year to date through July. One of these is July. One of these is year to date through July. Okay. So year to date through July, everything is up. July itself townhouses and condos are still, you're still doing better than ever, and you're only a slight dip in the single families. Sorry about that. So they're just really, a, and, and, and better than 2020. So the only real crack you can point to is that it's not quite as strong in single family homes for July as it was in uh, this time last year, but it's still stronger than uh, before. And prices are seeming to hold. So regionalism in uh, real estate. With that, my investing friends, Boy, rough day in the market. Everything is pretty down. Pretty medium day in the market, huh? Pretty medium day in the market. With that, my investing friends, let's go to the phones. Let me change this up so we get a better look. There we go. Hey, the one month on Saba. Look at that. Pretty good. One month on Saba chart. All up. Pretty good. With that, my investing friends, let's go to the phones. Sign up for the newsletters, be there or be square. Be there or be square. Sign up for the newsletters. Good morning, H Tub. Good morning, my friend. Great to see you. James, good morning, Joe. From hot and sunny Tampa Bay, let's F and go. Got a big game, big game a week from Sunday in Dallas, uh, Tampa Bay, and Tom Brady. See if uh, elderly Florida man can win another Super Bowl. When uh, on the Onion, the site, uh, the Onion, the fake news, when <laughs> when Tom Brady won the Super Bowl, the headline was "Elderly Florida Man Wins Super Bowl." Let's see if he can get another one. Great to see you, my friend. Mashik, hey Joe. So what you're saying, you become bullish once you move to Florida. True, yes. Well, the, the heat, the heat goat gets to your head. You did, however, you already were bullish. That's true. Maybe we should ask some of the shorts to move there as well. Well, if they're here, they're in Miami with Elizabeth with Elizabeth Bix friends. <laughs> uh, that darn right. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate. <laughs> I appreciate. That's right. The bull market. The bull market is in Florida. So there you go. That's. I wonder if that's if it's the weather that's making people shorts. Move them here. Chill them out. Jack M. Good to see you, Mashik. Jack M. Great to see you. Good morning, Joe. Great work as always. Thank you, my friend. When I think about Saba being bought for four to five times peak sales and can't get my head around who can afford to pay 200 billion, has to be a roadblock. No, great point. And this is why I was saying that maybe we're gonna see something creative, like maybe for Asia, it's one thing, maybe for North America, it's another thing, maybe for Europe, it's a third thing. Uh, maybe there's, maybe there's, uh, maybe that's, this is why it will be. Maybe this is why 
they will stay independent and have a partnership and a big pipeline of cash funneling in. Gosh, won't that be nice? $10 billion a year or something like that. Won't that be nice? Uh, so that's an interesting point, and I, I think it's a real point. And it, it's why I think there, there could be a partnership, could be a creative deal. Who knows? Who knows? Or they might just have to settle for a whole heck load of money uh, that's not quite the full price. And the name is spelled Muchek, 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 Muchek. Okay, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for the phonetic spelling. If I'm getting your name wrong, please do phonetic spelling. Uh, R dub dub, which, which I still go back to. Aretta dub, never, 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 fi never fixed me. It took like a year to figure that one out. G R P P R. We'll see. You don't have to. Don't have to worry about that one. G M Joe. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. G R P P R is Sab G M G R P P R is Saba has sufficient money to complete phase three trials. Yes, they do. They have uh, what do they got? Almost two hundred million dollars. They should be fine. They may raise anyway. They may borrow money. They had a meeting with Sanford Robertson's Francisco Partners, brokered by Wells Fargo, it seems, it seems that meeting happened based, we, we did a show on it based on uh, some documents we found uh, that was brought to us. So it seems, that, so that would, that they've financed so many companies. Francisco Partners, what they do is finance tech companies. So they may, uh, we may get a, a loan if, if needed uh, to, to get it to, to tide us over, who knows. Uh, you never want to. You never, ever, ever, ever want to be have the appearance even of of needing money. So they may raise money again before they need to, which might be smart. But they've been so poleaxed by the market. On the other hand, if they could get like a loan, and just just to have it, like a fifty million dollar line of credit, uh, just to have it in case they need it, just to take pressure off, that would be cool. But they they don't need it at the time. But it, it will be kind of close though. Two hundred million. There, those. Those large trials are expensive. They've got Parkinson's they want to pursue. They've got other, uh, they, they could run other studies. If they had unlimited money, they could run uh, prophylactic studies and, and things like that. So, Drew, good to see you. Would, would be great to adjust the price per share once we get clarity on partnership, possible upcoming equity offerings. Possibly a price per share projections need Remy to give clarity on the next call. Price, the, price per share project? Am I getting PPS rate price per share? Or are you, are you saying we need uh, clarity on the next call for equity offerings? There's not going to be an equity offering. At, at least there's not going to be an equity offering that, that's talked about in the next quarter. I mean, it's possible that a year out. Uh, I mean, I, I just said they, they, might, they, they, might, you know, they might raise money before they need to. But I don't see an equity offering. I, I, I would see they have Francisco Partners. Sanford Robinson is one of the biggest owners. They met with them. Uh, it, it, it's, it seems that they, they could possibly get a, a sweetheart deal there. I don't know. I mean, they, they could get something that's fair. They could, they could, they could get a loan that is, you know, a, uh, a, a decent rate of return and, and give them a decent rate of return on this loan. All right, my investing friends, great to see you. Thanks for being here. We'll do it again tomorrow. Sign up for the newsletters and... I will see you in the Discord. You get the book, you get the Discord. Just had two great stocks for the small caps. Looking for the next two stocks uh, for September. So let me know your, uh, your stocks. I'm on the hunt, on the prowl. I got two good ones. It took me till August 25th and then August 30th to find them this month. But I got two good ones again. I've, I've, not, I've never recommended a stock I don't like. And I, and I got a good angle on, on, on they're both. One is, just, one is a cool biotech, trades for less than cash and has big prospects. The other is a small, small, profitable company with a hidden, hidden catalyst. So I was, I was also proud of that to find, find a, just, not just a good company, but a cool little dynamic with that hidden catalyst as well. So anyway, sign up for the, uh, sign up for the small caps newsletter, sign up for the big dividends newsletter. Uh, I always complain about not being monetized. I'm going to, for the third time, file my Delaware incorporation. I went back and looked through my documents. Why am I not hearing from them? I think I didn't include LLC on, in, on one of the fields with the name of my company. So <laughs> I think when I get it wrong, they just don't contact me. So I'm going to file for a third time today after this, and then we'll get monetized. And then we're going to open the show up on the big dividends newsletter. We're going to do, we already did two videos. I want to, I, I, on, if you get the big dividends newsletter on the right side of the spreadsheet, I list all the, all those, I have six spreadsheets. 
Uh, we have the, the high yield, the, uh, the sleep well at night, the dividend growth, and the, uh, dividend, the tax shelter, global tax shelter. And then, there's, and then you can all list it alphabetically and listed by sector as well. But over on the right side, I, I, I say why I like each one. And then I'm going to do a video about each one. And with the, as, as a subscriber, you get that video a week ahead of time. I've done two, uh, but I'm not monetized. So no, then nobody watches. So no, no attention gets called to the stocks either. So it doesn't help out the people that buys the stock. So once I get monetized, then uh, we'll, I'll, I'll do a video for each of those stocks. Send those out a week ahead of time. You get that with the big dividends. You get the two stocks a month uh, with the small caps. And you get the Discord and the book guide to crushing the market that I wrote as well. And then I'm also going to do a video series, uh, an investing, a guide to investing video series. Uh, once we get monetized, once we, I get the show up and running, that'll be the next project. So that'll be fun too. Uh, so great to see you guys. Um, I'll see you in the Discord. Have a great night. See you tomorrow. See you in the Discord.